Hey welcome we are back with a brand new movie on what if Naruto was became part of Lala's family. But before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin the story. Heh <laughs> heh, Lala chuckled as she walked through her new hiding spot. Lala Saddle and Devaluk was the 8 year old heir to the Devaluk Empire. She had long pink hair tied into two ponytails by black ribbons with white edging, creamy white skin, emerald green eyes and a long skinny black tail that ended in a spade shape. She was wearing a white blouse that went down to her mid-thigh with detached black sleeves, that left her shoulders and upper arms bare, and a black corset-like piece around her waist that had a small hole in the back for her tail, and black knee-length socks and boots. She also had on a black necktie with a golden spherical gem in the center. Lala was a very smart girl, many would even call her a genius and she spent a lot of her time making odd inventions that tended to have some fatal flaw. The other part of her time she spent in lessons, learning about the unification wars her father was currently going through or some other skill like math or writing, and, more often than not, running away from these lessons. Currently Lala was on a small planet, with one central landmass, a series of islands not that far off the coast and several small islands scattered throughout the ocean. She was walking through a thick forest on the mainland. It feels nice. Much better than those boring old lessons, Lala thought as she continued to walk through the forest, marveling at the large trees. She had left Peek, her costume robot and best friend, back at home in their castle to act as a distraction. After walking for a while, Lala came across a stream. She sat down next to it, took off her boots and socks and rested her feet in the stream. The cold water felt nice on her bare feet. She rested there for a time, happy to just sit around and enjoy the sounds of nature. Not that long later, her eyes began to droop and she fell asleep next to the stream. XXX Lala's eyes slowly began to open as she woke up. She stretched and thought, that was nice. I need to come back here more often. She looked up at the sky and saw that it was pink, orange and red, signifying that she had slept through most of the day. Oops, I slept through the whole day. I should get back to my ship in case there are any wild creatures around. She stood up, put her socks and boots back on and turned to leave, when a faint sound filled her ears. With her curiosity spiked, Lala moved closer to the sound. The closer she got, the louder the sound was, and the more to her it seemed like crying. She was worried a little. The crying reminded her of Nana and Momo when one of them got hurt. Running now, Lala came across a small boy curled up into a ball. All she could see was that he had spiky blonde hair and was wearing a muted yellow-brown t-shirt that was torn in several places, dark green shorts and blue shoes. The ground all around the boy was trampled and there was a small stream of blood coming from him. Are you okay? Lala asked the boy, placing a hand on the boy's shoulder. She noticed that the second she had touched him, the boy had flinched like he expected to be hit or something. When nothing else happened to him, the boy's head popped out of his body revealing crystal blue eyes and three whisker marks on each of his cheeks, there was also tears falling down his cheeks. Before he could react, Lala had wrapped her arms around him and was rubbing her cheek against his, so Kuati. She squealed. Naruto, not expecting this, whatsoever, remained still, a few stray tears still making their way down his cheeks. Lala broke the hug off and said, My name is Lala what's yours? Naruto. He responded quietly, still unsure about this new girl. Lala let out a large smile, happy that he was talking to her. Well Naruto-kun. Why are you way out here? Why were you crying? Naruto broke eye contact, his eyes dropping to the ground. A few sobs shook his body before he started to speak. They, they came, after me. Lala cocked her head in confusion, who are they? Tears began to flow down his face again, as he remembered what happened the, villagers. There, there, Lala said going into big sister mode, like she did when comforting Nana or Momo. She brought Naruto close and rubbed his back, trying to comfort him as best as possible. When he had calmed down some, Lala asked, where are your parents, shouldn't you be with them? Naruto, with his face still pushed into Lala, shook his head and mumbled out something. The only word that Lala was able to pick out was dead, but that was enough. Lala looked up and saw the darkening sky and came to a decision very quickly perhaps too quickly. Well Naruto-kun, would you like to come with me? I can get you some food and new clothes. She said giving him a warm smile. Naruto thought for a moment, Lala was nicer than anyone he had met so far and she didn't call him demon, and she was offering food. That was good enough for him, as he nodded his head and moved to stand up. When he did, Lala saw that the inside of his shirt was much better looking than the outside, meaning that he had curled up when they had started attacking him but there was also a clean slice through the shirt on his left side with a large blood stain around it. Lala frowned when she saw this. Why would anyone ever attack a cute little boy like this? It's just so wrong. She quickly erased her frown though, as to not worry Naruto, 
and replaced it with a smile. Okay climb on my back, she said as she turned around and knelt down. Naruto, still not entirely sure about Lala, did as he was told. Lala grabbed onto his legs, stood up and began running swiftly to her ship forcing Naruto to hold onto her tightly. Her back felt nice and warm, and Naruto felt something he never had before, safe. As the trees whizzed by, Naruto slowly fell asleep in the comfort of Lala's back, letting the ordeal of the day wash away. Lala was happy. This experience reminded her of something in her past. When she was younger, probably around Naruto's age, she had gotten lost in a forest much like this one. She was scared and alone as the sun fell, and while she was curled up crying, her father, Gid, had found her and carried her back to their castle on his back. And now she was doing the same thing for someone else. It was funny how things worked out. After another minute of running and a little searching, Lala found her ship. It was a relatively small ship, little more than a cockpit, the engine in a small storage room behind the cockpit, only large enough for a single person. Found it, Lala said triumphantly. Hey Naruto-kun, she began as she turned her head around to find him asleep on her back. He looks so cute, she thought about the blonde sleeping peacefully on her back. Lala lightly picked up Naruto off her back and laid him against a tree next to her ship. She lifted up his shirt and looked at his wound. The wound wasn't that bad, it wasn't that deep or long, but it was still bleeding a little. I wish Peek was here, she'd be a lot more help than me. But I have to do what I can to help. She thought, as she moved to her ship and into the small storage room. She shuffled through the supplies until she came upon a roll of bandage. Naruto hadn't moved when Lala came back with the bandages, still sleeping away. Lala lifted up his shirt again before rolling the bandage around, covering the wound. Afterwards, she stood up and smiled at her handiwork, it wasn't perfect but it was the best she could do. She'd have to get someone at home to do a better job. Little did she know though, that the wound was continuing to seal up and heal over, and had almost entirely disappeared. Lala then picked Naruto up again and took him over to her ship. Now how's this going to work? She thought, flicking her tail back and forth. There wasn't really any place to put Naruto. There was only one seat and not much room in the storage room. It was a one-person ship after all. Hum, Lala hummed as she got an idea. Naruto winced as he woke up, keeping his eyes closed. He had been having a wonderful dream where he met a pink-haired girl that was kind to him, like she actually cared about him. But sadly life wasn't the kind. He was probably still lying on the soft grass where the villagers had left him for dead, but grass wasn't warm like this. Naruto moved his hand along the presumed ground, yet all he felt though was a soft fabric. This isn't dirt, where am I? Reaching further, Naruto grabbed something else that was small, long and sleek. Naruto would have kept holding it but a weak gasp sounded out followed by a sweet sounding voice whispered out, please let go, Naruto-kun. Naruto's eyes shot open and he saw that he was still with Lala. It wasn't a dream. He was lying on top of her lap holding onto her tail, and Lala had a heavy blush across her face. Oh, sorry, he said as he let go. It's okay. Lala relied in a normal voice, female Devalukin's tails are just very sensitive, so don't do it again. Devalukian. Naruto asked, as he sat up. Yay, Devalukian. That's my race, Lala explained. Oh, Naruto said as he began to look around. They were surrounded by a lot of bright lights and beyond that was something Naruto had never seen before. The ship was flying by a star, its molten liquid moving along and erupting off its surface. Naruto let out a sigh in wonder. First time flying through space, Lala asked. Naruto, still speechless at the beautiful sight, nodded. Yeah. I know what it's like. I still remember my first time leaving my planet, it's breathtaking. Naruto continued to watch the sun go by, as they got farther and farther away. After it was out of sight, Naruto asked, Where are we going? To my home on Devaluk. Lala proclaimed happily, a smile strewn across her face, We're almost there. XXX Lala's ship made its way through the hangar bay and landed near the exit. The cockpit opened up and Lala and Naruto got out and walked towards the exit. Now what? Naruto asked. Well first, I'm going to take you to the infirmary to have your wound checked on. Lala explained, and then, she continued, until two loud shouts interrupted her. Anya. Oni-sama. Two young girls screamed, running up to and hugging Lala. Lala smiled as she received her two sisters in a hug. Nana, Momo, did something happen? No, we just missed you, one of them said with the other agreeing. But I've only been gone a day. You two are so silly, Lala said giggling at her sisters but I have someone to introduce to you too. Lala looked over her shoulder and saw Naruto still standing by the ship. She waved at him to come closer and said, come on introduce yourself. Naruto nervously walked forward, next to Lala. None of the few kids Naruto ever tried to get to know ever liked him, they always followed their parents lead. 
Sure Lala was nice but he didn't know anything about these two. What if these two weren't any different? Naruto looked at the ground as he said, My name's Uzumaki Naruto. The two girls standing next to Lala looked identical, the only difference was in their clothes. They both had the same pink hair as Lala, but they had it straight down their backs but it also had a wild wavy look to it, they both had large purple eyes, the same creamy white skin as Lala and the same long skinny tail that ended in a spade. The first one had on a wide black headband, a two-layer sleeveless blouse, with the overlayer black and the under a nice earthy green, that went down to her mid-thigh, and striped green and black socks. The second had the same outfit on, except her blouse had a red overlayer and a black under, she had red and black striped socks and she had a thin black ribbon tied in a bow on her head. Her two canine teeth were also a little more pronounced. The first one said in a calm voice, Hello, Naruto-san. My name is Momo. It's a pleasure to meet you. Then the second said in a louder voice than Momo, Hi Naruto-kun, I'm Nana, nice to meet you. Shouldn't you two be in your lessons right now? Lala asked her little sisters. The twins hung their heads in shame, as Momo answered, Yes. But we saw your ship and we wanted to greet you, Nana explained. You shouldn't skip out on your lessons though, Lala scolded them, not realizing how hypocritical she was being. Now run off, I need to take Naruto-kun to the infirmary. But we just met Naruto-san. Momo complained, now, now, no buts, Lala said. Momo was the first to concede, yes, Oni-sama, she turned to leave saying, come on Nana. But, Nana hesitated for a moment more before giving in, fine, and followed her sister out. After they were gone, Lala turned back to Naruto, sorry about that, she began to walk forward as she continued to talk. Those were my sisters. They're sweet but they get into a lot of fights with each other. When they reached the exit, Lala turned left and Naruto followed along behind her. They traveled a short distance down this hall before they turned into another hall and walked in silence. Naruto wondered why Lala had stopped talking, he looked up at her and saw a look of confusion on her face. He was going to ask what was wrong, until they came up to another intersection and Lala stopped walk. Now which way is it again? She thought out loud. They stood there for several seconds before Lala figured it out, oh right, she cried out before turning right, sorry. There are so many halls, I sometimes get lost, she said looking down to Naruto. They walked a much short time down this hall before Lala turned and opened a door and walking in. Inside the room was a man wearing a white medical shirt, black pants and a stethoscope around his neck. There was also a desk with a computer on it, an observation chair and a lot of medical looking machines hanging on the wall. The man was sitting in front of a computer, too absorbed in what he was doing to notice the two people that had just entered. Um, excuse me. Lala said trying to get his attention. Yeah, yeah. What do you, he began before seeing that it was Lala. Ah, Lala Sama. Forgive me. I didn't realize it was you. I thought you were still away. Is there anything I can do for you? Naruto was surprised at the amount of respect this man had for Lala. No one had ever spoken to him in that regard and she was completely unfazed by it. Oh, it's no problem, Saito Sensei. She said, I was actually wondering if you could check over Naruto kun here. While saying this she placed her hand on Naruto's shoulder. He had a large cut on his left side and I wasn't able to do much but wrap it up. Why of course Lala Sama, if you could just sit down here, Naruto Sama, he said patting the chair. Naruto stood stiff, surprised that he was referred to with Sama. Lala being called that he could understand but he was a complete stranger. Naruto felt a friendly push on his back and looked up to Lala, who gave him an encouraging smile. He walked forward and sat down on the chair. So now where is this cut? Saito asked moving right next to Naruto. Lala, who was on the other side of Naruto, said, it's right here, and with that lifted up Naruto's shirt revealing the bandages that had a large red spot. Okay. Saito said, beginning his work. He carefully undid the bandages and unwrapped, revealing perfectly whole and smooth skin. So where is this supposed cut? Lala looked at the skin in wonder, it had just been cut open not that long ago, but here it was and not a scratch to be seen. But, but, it was just there. He had a cut right on his left side. Well, it's not here now, Saito replied. Would you like me to continue with the examination? Lala had dropped into deep thought, wondering how this happened. It took her several seconds before she realized that he had talked to her. Oh, um, yeah. Naruto, not really knowing what was going on, looked between the two as the man stood up and moved over to large black metal tube. He pressed a few buttons and the machine came to life. Lights flashed along it and it opened up. Come on, Naruto kun, Lala said holding her hand out to help him off the chair. What is it? Naruto asked, after he had grabbed her hand and jumped off the chair. It's an analyzer. 
Saito explained, people go in, it scans them and shows everything we need to know about that person. And you want me to go in it? Naruto stated, unsure about the new device having never seen anything like it. Yes. Saito replied, it'll only take a minute Naruto-kun, please. Lala pleaded with the whisker-marked boy. All right. Naruto said. An unusual feeling was circulating through Naruto. He wanted to please the pink-haired girl, but he hardly knew her. Unsure of his own feelings and why he was feeling them, Naruto walked into the machine, the metal tube closing behind him. A solid green beam filled the top of the tube before it moved down and passing through him several times. This was just the beginning of what seemed like several minutes to Naruto. Lala, on the other hand, was standing behind Saito as they both watched the information of the scan show up on the computer. The first thing to load was a digital construct of his body, showing everything from the hairs on his head to the soles of his feet. However, before Lala could see any more of the scan, a messenger came into the room. Excuse me, Lala-sama, he said, your father is here and he wants you to join him in his library. Lala's face immediately lit up. Papa's here, the messenger was about to say yes, when Lala burst past him and out the door. Papa's home, she thought as she ran down the corridors, it's been so long since he's been here. He's always stuck in the war that he never has time for us. XXX Gid Lucione Develuk, the contested ruler of the galaxy and king of Develuk, was standing in his library looking over a holographic map of the battlefronts. He had spiky black hair that tended to cover his eyes and a long black tail that ended in a trident. He was wearing a black v-neck shirt that showed off a good deal of his muscular chest, black pants, a large purple sash around his waist and a long purple cape with furry white spikes around his neck. He also had on golden spiral earrings, and two necklaces, one with some red beads on it and the other that hung lower off his neck with an ordainment the same shape as his tail on it. I'm so close, he said to himself, so close until the galaxy will be under one rule. He continued to study the map, trying to see something he hadn't before that might help in the war, until his door shot open and he was pelted with a small strong body. Papa. Lala cried as she hugged her father. Gid let out a small smile, it was always nice to see his eldest daughter, especially since he hardly saw her. He tousled her hair a bit as he said, it's good to see you too Lala. They stood like this for a few seconds before Gid spoke again, I hear that you've been running from your lessons again, though. Yeah, Lala said as she put her head down, still embracing her father. Don't you want to know how I'm unifying the galaxy? He questioned. Yes, but they're so boring. She answered. She then detached herself from Gid and moved away a little, and, you're never around anymore. Gid mentally let out a sigh. He knew this was going to come up eventually, he just wished it didn't have to be now. I know, but it's because the war is almost over. And as soon as it is, I'll be able to spend as much time with you, and the twins, as you want. You just have to wait a little while longer. He said as he moved towards Lala and embraced her again. They stayed like that for a short while until Gid asked. Now what's this I heard about you bringing someone here? Lala's face brightened at the mention of Naruto. Oh, it's a cute little boy I found all alone in a forest. Take him back. Gid stated. Lala immediately pushed away from her father. What, why? She asked. He's not one of us. Taking him in would show a sign of compassion, of weakness. I can't unite the galaxy and keep it stable if the people think I'm weak and compassionate, he reasoned. But he has no one. I found him alone in the woods crying with a cut in his side. He told me his parents are dead. I can't just abandon him in the forest again. Lala argued a few tears falling from her eyes. No buts. Gid said, take him back, Lala. Lala turned her back to her father, not believing what he was saying. In a sad, quiet voice she said, Mama would have let us help him. Gid let out a sad sigh at the mention of his recently deceased wife. She had been the kindest gentlest person in the world. So compassionate and loving, which was one of the reason he married her, another being that she was incredibly beautiful. He let out another sigh before giving in. Fine, he can stay for a while. Thank you, Papa, Lala said as she hugged her dad for the third time. Gid smiled, despite himself, Lala always had that effect on him. You're welcome, but I need to get back to work. Lala let go and went to the door. Goodbye, Papa. She then walked out the door and went back to the infirmary, where she left Naruto. When she got there, she found Naruto back on the chair and Saito looking intently at his computer. How is he? She asked. Saito looked up from his screen and had a look of confusing on his face. Well, he's perfectly, perfectly fine. Extremely strong vitals, good pulse. Nothing, wrong. He said leaving out the information about what he found. There's nothing wrong, but what are these two energies within him? I've never seen anything like them. Although, he continued, he wouldn't let me test anything else without you here. Doesn't really matter though, there isn't much left to test. 
it can happen another time. Lala smiled at the good news and moved over to Naruto, helping him off the chair again. Where did you go? Naruto asked. I went to see Papa, Lala happily replied, leading Naruto out the door. What's he like? Naruto asked. Papa's very kind, she began, even if he doesn't want to admit it. He's strong and smart and cares about us very much, but he's never around anymore. He's always busy with the war. What about your mom? Naruto continued, watching the ground, which caused him to bump into Lala, not noticing that she had stopped moving. He looked up and saw a sad look on Lala's face. What's wrong? Lala stood still for a moment, the sadness never leaving her face. No, it's just, Mama died not that long ago. I'm sorry, Naruto said, knowing a little what she must be going through. A sad smile formed on her lips as she looked over at Naruto. It's okay, I mean we share the same tragedy. At least I still have Nana, Momo and Papa with me. But you've been all alone, Naruto-kun. No one should have to go through life alone. A silence formed between the two as a warm feeling spread through Naruto. He wasn't sure what to call it, it was just warm and nice. The silence remained until a voice sounded down the corridor. Lala-sama. Seconds later a small floating robot flew up to Lala. Peek. Lala said as she hugged her costume robot. Ah, I'm sorry Lala-sama, Peek blabbered. Did they already find you? Was I not good enough of a distraction? Don't be silly, Peek. Lala replied. I came back on my own accord. I found someone that needed my help. She then looked down to Naruto as she introduced them. Naruto-kun, this is Peek. Peek, Naruto-kun. Peek was a small tan-ish white robot, a little bigger than a stuffed teddy bear. Her head was oval-shaped and she had swirls for eyes. She was plainly designed. Her most noticeable features were a small red tie that had several different colored sections close to the bottom, first black, then yellow, and last orange, large black wings that were longer than Peek's whole body, streaks of first a lighter purple and then a darker purple outlining her shirt and paw pads that adorned her fingertips and palms. Nice to meet you, Peek said floating down in front of Naruto's face. Hello, Naruto replied quietly. Oh, Peek, Lala said, do you think you could repair Naruto-kun's clothes? A look of confusion appeared on Naruto's face. Peek is my costume robot, Lala explained. She is able to turn into any clothes I want and can repair others' clothing. I could, Peek began, grabbing hold of Naruto's shirt and feeling it, but it's such low grade cloth. Wouldn't it just be better to give him some new clothes? Yes, but I was planning to get him some clothes after I cleaned him up a bit, and until then we can't have him walking around in a torn and blood stained shirt, Lala replied. If you say so. Peek said before a black tendril came from her back and wrapped around Naruto. Seconds later, the tendril unwound and retreated back into Peek. Naruto's shirt was now whole again and the blood gone. Now what? she asked. Well, I was thinking I should take Naruto to that bath, or, Lala said before being interrupted by a loud growling sound escape the small blonde's stomach. Or we could go get some food first if someone's hungry. Naruto nodded his head furiously. He had forgotten with all the strange things he saw today. But the whole reason he came with Lala was for food. Well then, it's de-iced. Let's go get some food, Lala said with a smile, and took Naruto's hand and led him down the hall. If you're not going to need me, I'm going to go to your room and rest. That distraction took a lot more energy than I thought it would, Peek said. Okay. Bye Peek, Lala said as she continued to take Naruto to a new room. The majority of the room was filled with a very long table covered in a white tablecloth with decoratively designed wooden chairs surrounding it. She took Naruto down to the end of the right next to the head of the table, and pulled out two chairs. She had him sit on the chair farther from the head as she went to and knocked on a door. A woman with dark brown hair opened it and said, Why Lala Sama, is there anything you need? Yes, could we have two plates of food brought out please? Lala asked. Of course Lala Sama, we will have them out in several minutes, she said before moved back into the kitchen. Lala walked back and sat next to Naruto, and like the cook said, Two servants brought out two plates full of food within minutes. Will there be anything else, Lala-sama? One of the servants asked. No that will be all, Lala replied, watching as the servants bowed and walked away. She then looked back to Naruto, who was staring wide-eyed at the plate sitting in front of him. Is this all for me? He asked. Yep, Lala said. Naruto picked up the fork and took his first bite of the food, and it's so warm. This got Lala wondering, of course it's warm, why wouldn't it be? I don't know. Naruto began between bites of food, it's just most of the food I've eaten hasn't been warm. This got Lala to pause for a second as she was raising her fork to her mouth. That's odd. I wonder why that is, she thought before returning to the food. When they had both finished, 
Naruto had finished much faster and was a little restless sitting in his chair. Lala took Naruto to another room. This one had a small section of tiles with a few drains around it but the more spectacular part was the giant heated pool. Naruto was surprised at its size and wonder, he had never seen a bathroom such as this. Although in all actuality he had never even seen a bathroom with running water, always stuck with a river. Naruto was stuck staring at the large body of water, this is until Lala started taking off his shirt. He looked up to her and saw that she was already naked. What are you dong? Naruto asked. Well we can't get you clean up in your clothes, silly. Lala laughed, besides I do this with Nana and Momo all the time. Before Naruto even knew it, he too was naked in the bathroom and Lala was leading him over to a faucet on the wall. She had him sit down on a small stand and she began scrubbing his back while humming a happy tune. Naruto was experiencing another new thing on this crazy day. Never before had someone one else taken the time to scrub him over and make him clean. It felt nice to be pampered over, like a little prince. What's your favorite color, Naruto-kun? Lala asked out of the blue. Orange, Naruto exclaimed happily, looking back at Lala. Orange is nice, mine is purple. Lala said with a smile, before picking up a bucket of water and dumping it over Naruto's head, washing the suds off his body. They're all done. She then ran towards the pool and jumped in doing a cannonball. After surfacing and playfully spitting out a stream of water, Lala bellowed, Come on Naruto-kun. With a moment's more hesitation, Naruto jumped in the pool after Lala. The water was warm and crystal clear. They played and splashed around for a while before just sitting and resting in the water. Before long Naruto's eyes began to droop again and he fell into a peaceful sleep next to Lala. A knock on his door interrupted Gid's study of the holographic map of the battlefronts. Come in, he said, his eyes never leaving the map. Saito came through the door and bowed respectfully. Excuse me, your highness. What is it? Gid's gruff voice sounded out, still stuck on the map. Well, it's about the young boy Lala Sama brought back with her, Naruto Sama, he said. Gid's attention immediately moved from the map to the doctor, what about him? Well, he began, aside from having extremely strong vitals for a six year old, he has two different energies within him. What do you mean? Gid asked. Saito took a second to organize his thoughts before replying. I'm not entirely sure myself. I've never seen anything like it before. The first energy seems to cover his entire body, entangling most if not all his major organs and it's almost as if the energy is flowing. But the second energy is very different. While the first is relatively small and is localized to a system of nerves or pathways or something, the second is massive yet it doesn't seem to attach to any sort of mass at all. It's just there, gathered around his lower abdominal. How is this possible? I don't know, Saito said throwing his hands up in the air. I even went through our entire database of different alien races for any sign of an energy system of this sort and nothing. We have no information whatsoever on his race, or if it is just him that has this. Interesting, Gid said, dropping into thought again. Your Highness? Saito inquired. I may have been too quick in telling Lala to send him home, it's a good thing she convinced me otherwise, Gid said to himself. Saito, I want a thorough analysis of this condition and I'm placing you in charge. Do not disappoint me. He finished this last part with a slight sinister edge to his voice. Yes sir, Saito replied, bowing again before leaving Gid to his thoughts. Gid stood alone, his mind completely drawn from his prior activity and firmly placed on the small orphaned boy Lala had brought with her. Naruto. What secrets do you hold? Naruto awoke wrapped in the warmth and comfort of a soft blanket on top of a large bed. Confusion flooded his mind as he wondered where he was, until he remembered the day prior. He rubbed the remaining sleep from his eyes while he observed the room he was in. The floor was made of some sort of stone. Naruto wasn't sure what kind, colored a nice dark purple and the walls were a pure white. There wasn't much that furnished the room, the bed he had slept on was in the back left corner. A dresser back in the other corner and a small work table to the right of the dresser. All were of a dark, black wood. There was also a window on the wall between the bed and the dresser. Naruto threw the sheets off, which he happily noted were a vibrant orange color hopped off the bed and walked over to the window. The window held a view of flat organized plains of grass and then, far off in the distance, a thick forest. It was quite a contrast to his home, there you would have a hard time trying to find any place where there weren't trees a little ways away. Moving on, Naruto went to the dresser and opened up one of the drawers. Inside he found several different outfits, the majority of which were white, black and orange, but there were a few of other colors. He took a look down at his own clothes and realized they were nowhere to be found. Instead he had on a pair of black shorts and an orange t-shirt which were very soft and smooth compared to his old ones. 
His feet were also bare but Naruto saw a pair of simple black shoes with orange and black striped socks sticking out of them, which he decided to put on. Naruto's curiosity inspired inspection of the room then took him over to the work desk, but in the middle of his search for the mostly empty drawers, a sound pricked his ears. A series of loud, swift thuds came from down the hall and stopped right in front of his room's door. Since Naruto had essentially grown up in the forest, with a few trips now and then into the village, sometimes with the Hokage, he had learned one major survival skill. Never trust unknown sounds. With that in mind, he immediately found a place to hide under the bed, as the doorknob turned. He had just settled down, when someone pushed into the room shouting, Naruto-kun. He figured that the voice was too squeaky and wild to be Lala, so it had to be one of her sisters. He couldn't tell which one considering all he could see was red and black striped socks and the tip of a black tail. To be on the safe side, Naruto decided to remain hidden. You could never know what someone might do, as experience had taught him once before. Nana looked around the room in confusion, she had thought for sure that Naruto was in this room, unlike the past ones. Guess 7 isn't a lucky number, she thought as she looked under the bed, where a set of deep blue eyes met her own. Oh, there you are Naruto-kun, what are you doing under there? Naruto stood still, not moving an inch towards the wildest of the three princesses. Partially because he was still in survival mode, wary of strangers, and partially because he was a little shy. Shy because he hadn't gotten many chances to play with other kids his age. Come here, come here, she said with a smile trying to coax him out like a small animal. I won't bite, much, she joked. Reluctantly Naruto crawled out and looked into her smiling face. Her bright purple eyes and cute canine tooth filled smile dissolved his wary instantly but his shyness skyrocketed. Nana, he believed her name was. His shyness had just begun to make him look down at his feet when Nana grabbed his hand and pulled him into the hall with her. Surprised, Naruto looked at Nana while trying to keep up with her run. She had a smile across her face, one that made Naruto wonder what she was planning. Where are you from, Naruto-kun? She asked after making a turn down another hall. K Konoha. He said quietly dropping his head down again, which resulted in him almost tripping. Noticing this, Nana slowed down a little, but was still moving at a relatively fast pace. What's it like there? She asked. A moment passed before Naruto responded. I didn't really see the village that much. I mostly stayed in a forest near it. I took trips into it sometimes but always went back to the forest. Nana stopped in front of a door and said, that sounds nice, being able to come and go whenever you want. She went through the door and into a large field, with sharp green grass that swayed with a breeze that came from nowhere. There was a low inclined hill under the grass with a sole tree standing on top of it and a large pond off past the tree. There was also a large garden in another part of the room. Above there seemed to be clouds passing by a crystal blue sky. As Naruto walked in, he marveled at how the walls seemed to disappear and that it seemed like they had stepped outside to a meadow. It's fake, you know. Nana told him while looking at the sky with a slight frown, Papa had it built so we didn't have to leave the castle to be outside, he doesn't let us go outside without him, so usually I can only come here. Naruto was still watching the fake clouds fly across the ceiling when he felt Nana's gaze fall back on him. He tried to ignore it until she started to move closer. He looked at her and found that her face was a few inches from his. The marks on your face remind me of an animal's whiskers. She said absent-mindedly placing her hand on his cheek. And I love animals, they're so cute and fun, I can even talk to them. She continued as she began rubbing Naruto's cheek. Naruto wasn't sure why, but a strange rumbling started in his chest while Nana continued to rub his cheek. It then rose up, through his body, and escaped his mouth as a soft purr, startling Nana. She rapidly withdrew her hand for a moment, before letting out a loud giggle. You even purr too. She laughed while placing her hand back on Naruto's cheek and rubbing it a bit more, much to Naruto's embarrassment. A few moments later, still laughing from her discovery, Nana grabbed Naruto's hand again pulling him farther into the room. When they got to the middle of the field, Nana dropped his hand again and went to the tree, hooking onto it and sliding around. Come on Naruto, let's play, she shouted. Watching the happy girl play around the tree, Naruto froze up. This was usually the point where someone would come and take away their child before he could join them always glaring at him as they walked away. A wide smile spread across Naruto's face, for once he'd actually get to play with someone. Not letting a second more get wasted, Naruto ran after Nana. XXX for Naruto, the time passed by in bliss. They were having a great time running around and splashing in the pond. Now they were playing tag and Nana was it. It was a lot harder to run away from Nana than he had thought. Even with all his experience running from wild animals and sometimes people, she could also tell when he was trying to pull a trick like stopping and immediately changing directions or climbing the tree, like it was an instinct for her. Despite her innate skill, 
Naruto still ran trying to keep away. That is until a rumbling in his stomach got him to stop. That moment was enough for Nana, as she caught up with Naruto and tackled him to the ground. Sitting on top of the whisker-marked boy, she let out a victorious yell, yeah. I got you. At this point, the rumbling in Naruto's stomach came about again and let out a loud growl. Oh, are you hungry Naruto-kun? Nana asked, to which Naruto gave a large nod. Then an even louder growl came from Nana's stomach. Haha, <laughs> me too. She said with a sheepish smile. Let's get some food. Yeah. Naruto replied, his earlier shyness long forgotten. Nana quickly got up off of Naruto and went to the door, leaving Naruto to catch up. When he did, he found Nana peeking out the door, her tail swinging back and forth as she did. Why are you being all stealthy? He asked her. Well, she began, looking over her shoulder, I'm kinda supposed to be with Momo in lessons right now. But I'd rather play with you, so we just have to sneak around to get food. I've done it plenty of other times. Making one last check of the hall, Nana put a finger to her lips and snuck into the hall with Naruto close behind. Amazingly, they didn't run into anyone by the time Nana stopped in front of a door. Okay, I'm going to sneak in here and grab some food. You stay here and keep guard, Nana said. Okay, Naruto replied, as he took a position next to the door and Nana slinked through it. The time passed by slowly as Naruto stood, waiting. A few minutes passed and nothing had happened. No one came through the hall and Nana wasn't back yet. Naruto was just starting to get bored when someone turned into the hall. He was a tall man with pale silvery hair and skin of a light tan. He was dressed in full body armor, with plates that were light brownish tan and connected with a black material, which was designed to look like parts of a skeleton, with a skull as the chest plate. There were also two large red orbs on the shoulders of the armor and one more, tinier orb where a belt would go. His tail was exactly like a scorpion's and his eyes were slightly different colors, with one an ocean blue and the other a dark silvery blue, something Naruto could only notice when he got close. As he walked by, Naruto could hear him muttering to himself, right when I get back from chasing Lala-sama halfway across the galaxy, they have me running around trying to find Nana-sama in this giant castle. Just wonderful. When he reached Naruto, he stopped and looked at the boy. Naruto thought he was going to ask him who he was or why he was here, but he was wrong. Do you know where Nanasama is? Zastan asked in a tired voice. Naruto, surprised by his question, took a few moments before shaking his head. Zastan, although not really expecting anything, let out a sigh as he moved on past the small child he knew nothing about. Confused by the entire encounter, Naruto stood still watching the man drag his feet as he walked until the soft scratching of a door opening behind him caught his attention. Nana slid through the small crack in the door carrying two large chunks of bread and two apples. She handed him one of each and asked, after taking a large bite in her apple, did you see anyone? Not really. Naruto replied, there was only one guy that, but before he could get any farther, a loud shout by the very man he was talking about interrupted him. Nana-sama, Zastan, a few moments ago, had already turned down the hall and walked on. Trying to think of any place Nana would hide, until a thought passed through his head, he should probably have checked out that boy and taken him with him, since he had never seen the boy before. Letting out another tired sigh, Zastan turned around and traveled back to the other hall. As he turned the corner, he saw the same blonde, spiky-haired boy, but this time there was also a distinctively pink-haired girl with him. His right eye twitched once, before he shouted out her name. The shout startled Nana causing her to almost drop her apple. Oh, she said as she took a step back. Naruto turned his head towards her to ask what she meant, but she quietly said one word first, run. Immense relief had filled Zastan when he saw Nana not that far away maybe his day was turning around. Seconds later he saw Nana say something to the boy next to her, which made him wonder who the boy was. Seconds after that, his newly happy mood changed again, to this was not his day as Nana grabbed the mysterious boy's hand, turned, and ran away from him. Zastan could already tell that today was going to be a long day. XXX left, right, another right, they ran down the halls trying to get away from Zastan, although Naruto wasn't entirely sure why they were running. Another left, and the halls were still empty making Naruto wonder where everyone was. They came to a four-hall intersection and Nana had them turn left again. At the end of this hall there was only one way to go and Naruto sensed that there was a person coming down that hall. He stopped Nana and took her with him into a dark room, where they hid in something soft. What are you doing, Naruto-kun? She asked. There was someone coming down the other hall. Naruto explained, but we should probably be quiet if we don't want to be caught. Yay, Nana said shuffling around a little before settling down in a comfortable position. Outside the room, 
they heard several loud thumps of footsteps come down the hall and then stop with a loud exclamation of, Lala Sama? After that, they could only hear a few mumbles, the door effectively muffling the words. Then nothing. No sound was coming from the hall anymore. Naruto was wondering if it was safe to come out, when he heard the crinkling of an apple next to him. He looked over and saw Nana taking a bite from her apple. Nana Chan. He whispered loudly, What are you doing? I'm still hungry, she whispered back, but what if they're still there? Naruto said, they could come in at any moment. But what if they're not? Nana reasoned, but the creaking of a door opening quickly disproved that idea. This way, this way, Dasa, a small robotic voice called walking through the room. She's in here, Lala asked, walking in after her small robot dog and flipping on a light switch. Yes, he said, moving over to a small pile of sheets, here, Dasa. Lala moved next to the pile and jumped onto it grabbing something through the sheets, which let out a small, eep, sound. Thanks sniff sniff trace kun, she said, as she unwrapped the person she was holding captive. Naruto kun, what are you doing here? She asked, wondering why the startled blonde was where Nana was supposed to be. Wait, Lala sama, you know this boy? Zastan asked, crouching down beside her. Yeah, this is Naruto kun, she explained, looking up at Zastan. I found him alone in a forest yesterday, and brought him home. I was actually just about to go get him. So why are you here? She asked, turning her head back to look at Naruto. Naruto reached a hand behind his neck and scratched it a little while he began, well. But before he could say anything else, Nana threw the sheets off of herself and shouted, Anya. Nana, there you are, Lala said happy to have found her sister. Nana-sama, you're supposed to be in your lessons right now, Zastan said his voice falling into a scolding tone. Yeah. Nana replied her head and voice dropping. Well, you're already late enough, so get out of the sheets and let's go. Zastan continued, not letting up on her. Okay, she said, standing up, sending the few sheets that were once in a neat pile, sprawling across the floor. Bye Naruto-kun. See you later. And with that Nana followed Zastan out the room. Looks like it's just you and me now, Lala said, standing up and holding her hand out to Naruto. Yay! He replied taking her hand. Lala let out a large smile, as she helped him out of the sheets. Naruto seems a lot happier today, she thought as they walked out the room. Where are we going now? Naruto asked. Well I was hoping you'd help me with an invention of mine, Lala answered. Sure. Another smile spread across Lala's face, great, she said as she started leading Naruto to her lab. XXX Lala's lab was anything but organized. Papers, small gadgets and materials were littered across the green floor. There was a large computer against the back wall, a few bins for holding all the gadgets that were across the floor, and a small circular table in the center of the room with a light shining directly on it, so that it was easy to see anything on it. Peek was sitting on the table and addressed Lala as she walked in, Lala Sama, you're back, did you find someone to test your invention on? Yeah, I got Naruto-kun. Lala responded, pulling Naruto with her through the room and up to the table. Off the table, she picked up a small circular disc that had a small spiral with four lines coming off of it painted on the back. She took this and stuck it onto Naruto's back. Curious, Naruto asked, what's T, but was interrupted as Lala shouted, activate, and pressed a small button. A moment passed and nothing happened, and then another. Then suddenly, the small machine on Naruto's back started to spark and fell off of his back. It spent a few seconds on the ground before it created a small explosion. After the smoke cleared, revealing Lala's invention in pieces. Lala let out a moo sound as she dropped into thought. Naruto remained silent as Lala bent down and picked up the pieces of the broken machine, placing them on the table. She still held a look of deep thought, not sure what to do. Naruto stood next to Lala looking around aimlessly until he remembered the question he was about to ask. What was it supposed to do, Lala-chan? Lala took a second to respond, finishing whatever thought she was thinking. Well, it was supposed to create two wings that would allow you to defy gravity and fly around. I just started trying to make them recently and I haven't made much progress. Naruto stood awkwardly again, not sure what to do while Lala worked on her invention. His eyes traveled the floor, looking over all the papers and things, when they landed on a small rabbit-like robot. Its body was a grayish white, except for a black triangle on the top of its head and its blue-tipped ears and tail. When Naruto moved over and picked it up, it purred to life and jumped from his arms, startling Naruto. The sound of a small startled cry tore Lala's mind away from her invention. She looked over at the whisker-marked boy and saw her small rabbit robot hopping rapidly around Naruto. Realizing that she had essential forgotten that Naruto was there, 
Lala decided that she could work on her invention later and moved over next to Naruto. She knelt down and the rabbit jumped into her lap. Oh I remember this guy. She said smiling while scratching its chin. I made him a while back to pull a prank on Zastin. He was running around all the next day trying to catch him. A small bit of his shyness came back, as Naruto quietly asked her, You love to make inventions, don't you, Lala-chan? Yay. She replied happily, It's really boring here with all the lessons I have to go through, so I started to invent things for fun and to pass the time. Peak was actually one of my first inventions. And every day has been a pleasure, Lala-sama. Peak said her affection for Lala clear in her voice. Ah, Peak, Lala cooed, grabbing her in a warm hug. Naruto looked on at the two. He could tell that they cared for each other deeply and only one thing filled his mind, he wished someone cared about him like that. Once again, Naruto's stomach let out a loud growl, since Naruto had never gotten a chance to eat the bread and apple Nana got him, both of which were probably still lying somewhere in the sheets. Naruto's stomach's growl made Lala realize that she was a bit hungry too. Want to get some food, Naruto-kun? Her question was met by a nod from Naruto. She let go of Peak, stood up and started to lead Naruto and herself to get some food, with Peak following close behind. XXX After getting another delicious meal, prepared by the staff in the kitchen, Naruto and Lala were walking down the hallway. Naruto was actually leading the way, happily having Lala follow him. He was leading her to the indoor field so they could play around and hopefully see Nana too. When they were almost there, Naruto asked a question. Do you always get food like that? Confused by the question, Lala asked, like what? Naruto had to think for several seconds before continuing, food that's really good and all warm, and a lot of it. Lala paused in her walking, Naruto-kun said the same thing yesterday. Why is that? Isn't all food warm? Making sure to catch up with Naruto, she voiced her thoughts, you said the same thing before Naruto-kun, what do you mean, isn't all food warm? I don't know. Naruto replied, not stopping a second while navigating the halls. It's just most of the food I get I have to find in the forest. And whenever I do, if I do, the food is cold. The only time I got any warm food was when the Hokage treated me to some. Lala froze upon hearing this, while Naruto continued walking and found the field. Found it, he said while rushing into the room. Peak floated up to her mistress, wondering why she had stopped. When she got in front of Lala, she saw a frown spread across her face. What's wrong Lala-sama? I don't get it, Peak, Lala said, why has Naruto-kun been left all alone in a forest? To scavenge for food and, and, he was even attacked by his own village. Naruto-kun couldn't have done anything to deserve that, it's not fair. Peak let out a sigh, she may have been younger than Lala, but she was certainly more mature. That's life though, not everyone is as fortunate as you, Lala-sama. But, but, Lala said, moving towards the doorframe, watching Naruto play on the tree through the door. Naruto-kun shouldn't be alone in life. No one should be. Lala watched Naruto for a few more seconds, before she decided on something. I don't care what Papa says anymore, even if he orders it. I won't let him send Naruto-kun back. Her words hung in the air for a little before Naruto called out to her, Come on Lala-chan. She stayed with Peak for a few more seconds before walking in towards the boy. She may have been young but Peak knew that Lala had inherited her mother's goodwill and would make a wonderful queen someday. XXX Naruto nestled against the warm body next to him. He could feel arms reaching around him pulling him close in a soft embrace. His body was telling him it was time to get up, but he didn't want to move and lose this nice feeling. He could remember spending the rest of the day with Lala and, after she had showed up, Nana. He didn't remember falling asleep but at some point in the night, Naruto woke up for a few moments and saw Lala and Nana on either side of him, all curled up on the grass. He was filled with a happiness that he just couldn't place. Now when he opened his blue eyes, he saw that he was cuddled up with Nana, her arms reaching around him locking him in her embrace. Her soft face was a breath's width away. Naruto twitched a little as his body began to wake up and accidentally woke Nana up. Her purple eyes cracked open and she let out a large yawn, releasing Naruto from her hold as she did so. Good morning, Naruto-kun. Morning, Naruto replied with a smile. Unbeknownst to the two, Zastan was sitting up on a tree branch above their heads. Since Nana had decided to skip out on half her lessons the day before, he had to bring her in, again. And after the day he had yesterday, Zastan was not in the mood to chase around a princess. Instead he had planning ahead and decided to wait where she was sleeping so he could just grab her right when she woke up. After that he was going to take a nice long nap. Zastan gracefully jumped from his perch in the tree and landed with a soft thud a few feet away from Nana and Naruto. To say that Nana was startled would have been an understatement. The distance she jumped off the ground would have put him on his knees laughing, if he wasn't so tired, 
he never had the upper hand on Nana. Zastin, Nana yelled after she landed, rushing to her feet, her tail sticking straight out. What was that for? I'm sure you know Nana-sama. Zastin replied before explaining, you decided to skip half your lessons yesterday. So now you get to make them up today. What? But we don't have lessons today, Nana shouted. Zastin rubbed one of his eyes wringing the sleep from it as he closed the distance between him and Nana. You should have thought of that before, he said without an ounce of sympathy. Well I'm not going, she said matter-of-factly, after which she crossing her arms and let out a, humph, sound. Rather than try and argue with the stubbornest of the three princesses, although Lala could be quite difficult on some matters, Zastin swiftly grabbed Nana and lifted her up onto his shoulder. Zastin! Put me down, she roared, banging her fists against his back. After a few seconds of her protesting, Zastin decided to grab her tail and, for the most part, silence her. Immediately the strength left Nana's body and a heavy flush covered her face. No, let go Zastin, she moaned. Ignoring her plea, Zastin looked over to the blonde boy, who had remained still ever since Zastin had first dropped down. Excuse me, Naruto Dono, he said. Naruto, for his part, had been trying to decide if he should do anything but, when Zastin addressed him, he froze up. It was still a very unusual feeling for Naruto to be spoken to with any form of respect. By the time he came back to his senses, the door of Zastin's departure had long since closed. Alone again, Naruto began walking around the field and happened to end up in the large garden. He walked through it and looked at all the colorful flowers with interest. He hadn't gotten a chance to walk through it before since Nana nor Lala ever went into it. While walking through it, Naruto noticed several of the plants' soil was dry. Thinking that he should water them, he searched around for a watering pail, eventually finding one and filling it with water. After watering several plants, Naruto felt a presence walk into the garden. Turning around, his first thought, when he saw the person, was that Nana had already escaped and come back. But that changed pretty quickly since the new girl had a different feel about her. With Nana, there was just a sense of energy and playfulness oozing off her but this girl seemed more timid and quiet. There was also the slight difference in clothes, hers being green and black rather than red and black. She had a slight look of surprise on her face but that quickly faded before she said, Oh hello Naruto-san. And that confirmed it, her voice carried a more formal tone with it, one that he doubted Nana's voice could take. She must be Momo then, Naruto thought, remembering their short meeting two days before. She says thank you, Momo said, drawing Naruto away from his thought and on to the girl that was now only a little bit away. Her eyes were firmly placed on the flower Naruto had just watered. Confused, Naruto asked, what? That flower, she's thanking you for watering her, she explained, but when the confused look persisted on Naruto's face, she continued. I am able to connect with the hearts of plants and can then talk to them. Oh, cool, Naruto said remembering that Nana had said something around the same lines. Together the two finished watering the remaining plants, although Momo didn't say anything else. At one point Naruto looked over at her and saw her eyes closed standing still, taking in the calm, serenity of the garden. Suddenly, out of the blue, Momo said, I think it would be a lot nicer if there were birds flying around and chirping. After taking a moment to figure out what she meant, Naruto had to agree with her. While the room felt very close to the wilderness, there was just something missing. It was too quiet, the sounds of animals living was nowhere to be found in the room, something he hadn't noticed before in the room with Nana. Without even realizing it, Naruto spent the next several minutes with Momo just taking in the room's feel. The only reason he stopped was because Lala burst into the room, more or less shouting, Papa's leaving. Having come out of her trance-like state too, Momo went over to Lala and asked, He is? Yeah, we have to hurry and say goodbye before he leaves, she replied grabbing hold of Momo's and Naruto's hand and pulling them out the door. Naruto, getting pulled through the halls again, wasn't sure what to think, he hadn't met Lala's father yet, but from the few things she said about him, he sounded like a nice person. Before long, they reached the hangar bay, the same one Lala brought Naruto through two days ago. Now, however, it was filled with four men standing in front of a well-sized spaceship. Two of them were just standing on either side of the entrance to the ship like guards, while the other two were deeply engrossed in a conversation. The first had black spiky hair and wore a long purple cape with furry white spikes around the neck that covered the rest of his clothes from view. The second had long gray hair that flowed right into his full gray beard and mustache, his face was wrinkled and he had a scar running down the right side of his face just missing his eye, which showed his age and experience. Naruto wasn't able to hear anything that they said since before he got close the black-haired man was tackled by Lala. Papa, she yelled as she did so. A small smile dawned on Gid mouth, 
as he tousled Lala's hair a little. Hello Lala. I take it you're here to wish me goodbye? He asked. Yep. And Momo and Naruto-kun are here too. Lala said happily, looking over her shoulder to the approaching two. Gid addressed his other daughter first, kneeling next to her and embracing her in a gentle hug. Goodbye Papa. Momo said, grabbing him tighter as she did. Don't worry Momo, I'll be back soon. Gid responded, trying to comfort her. He hated that he had no time to spend with his daughters but with the unification war so close to being over, he couldn't risk spending any more time away from the front. Letting go of Momo and standing up, Gid's eyes finally ended on Naruto. Under his gaze, Naruto began to feel uncomfortable. Gid's black unyielding eyes staring down at him with a certain hostility, not the same as the villagers, but still there. Unconsciously Naruto started to shy behind Lala. So this is Uzumaki Naruto. Gid thought while watching the small boy, what does Lala see in him? There doesn't seem to be anything impressive about him. If it weren't for the two energies inside him, I wouldn't let him stay much longer. Letting out a sigh, Gid turned to his companion and said, let's continue our conversation on board the ship. Gid then began leading the way onto the ship, his companion followed first and then the two guards. While he was climbing aboard, Lala started waving and happily shouted, bye bye papa, come back soon, after the ship lifted silently off the ground and flew away, Lala dropped her hand and turned to face Naruto, a new smile adorned on her face. Grabbing his hand, she said, come on Naruto-kun, I've got a surprise for you. XXX the twin princess walked down the hall together, Nana, being much more relaxed with her arms stretched behind her head, and Momo, who had a slightly anxious face. I don't think this is a good idea Nana, you have already ditched the lesson once, Momo said voicing her concern. Nah, it doesn't matter. Nana stated, besides this way I have more time to play with you. Still worried Momo began, but, however she was interrupted by Nana, who said, and I can always have you tell me whatever they taught. They always go on and on, I'm sure you'd be able to go through it a lot faster. Despite her sister's optimism, Momo was still a little nervous and let it be known through a soft whine. Come on Momo, there's no need to worry, Nana continued. The two walked in silence for a short while until the sound of someone running came down the hall. Right when they were about to turn a corner, a head of blonde hair came around first running into them both. Oh, what was, Naruto-kun? What are you doing here? Nana asked, seeing the blonde boy sprawled out in front of her. Clamoring forward, Naruto ignored her question and pleaded, You have to hide me, Nana-chan. Lala-chan is chasing after me with something that smells dangerous. Confused, Nana asked, Wait, what? Restlessly, Naruto looked over his shoulder while repeating, Yeah, yeah. Lala Chan's chasing after me with something that smells dangerous. Still not making heads or tails of it, Nana looked over to Momo, who shared her look of confusion. Wait, stop. Now start over from the beginning, she ordered. Calming down slightly, Naruto began telling his short tale. Well, Lala Chan told me she had a surprise and then took me to the dining room. She told me to wait for a bit, and after a while I started smelling something really bad. It started to get worse and eventually it started coming closer, that's when I decided to run but now I think she's coming after me cause I can still smell it. At the moment Naruto mentioned the dining room, both girls gulped. They both well knew of Lala's skills in a kitchen and to hide before she has you try some. Standing up swiftly, Nana grabbed Naruto's hand and said, Okay, Naruto-kun, follow me. The two then ran down the hall, away from Lala, leaving Momo all alone in the hall. Nana? She whimpered quietly, holding a hand out to the figures that were readily disappearing. She wasn't alone for long though. Lala came running around the corner soon after the other two left, with Peek following close behind. She was holding a small square pan with some black ooze coming off of it. That Naruto-kun, where did he go? I just wanted to make him some nice homemade food, since he's never really had any. Lala grumbled to herself, before running off down the hall, forcing Peek to try and catch up. Alone again, Momo's face slowly filled with a muted sadness. Me and Nana were going to play, right? She thought, watching the empty corridor that her twin had run down. Nana. She whimpered another time, hoping that she would come back. Three days later, but Lala Sama, that would be indecent. So, I do it all the time with Nana and Momo, Lala said, currently arguing with one of her attendants. Yes, but they are family and more importantly both girls, the attendant argued back. I don't mind, Lala said making a move for the door into the bath. No means no, the attendant said, moving slightly to the left to block her path. But we've already done it once before. Lala whined out, throwing her arms around the source of the argument, Naruto, and pulling him close. For Naruto, the past two days had passed by in pure bliss, 
one he hadn't felt since the last time he found a grove of wild berries. He spent most of that time with Lala or Nana, but he didn't see Momo that much. The only times he did, he saw her with Nana, who would pull him into whatever they were doing. Just a little bit before, Naruto and Lala had been heading to the bath but were intercepted by one of Lala's bathroom attendants, and for now, he was happy to stand by and let the two argue. Lala's attendant had had enough, arguing with the young princess was like yelling at a brick wall, she couldn't get Lala to understand the situation in the slightest. Letting out a sigh, she gave one last look at the pair before giving in, fine, if you must you can take a bath together with him, but just this once, okay? She didn't even get a second to blink before the princess rushed past her with Naruto in tow. Motioning to the other attendant with her, they followed the two into the bath. The time passed by in a blur for Naruto, one moment Lala was taking off his clothes again and then next one of the attendants was scrubbing him over with a warm sponge, letting Naruto sit back and relax. He liked all the pampering and special treatment that he got while with Lala, even if it made him a little uneasy, but it also caused him to think about his home, and that when he went back, he'd be back to scavenging for food again and cleaning off in the cold river. Not to mention he wouldn't see Lala anymore. Pushing his thoughts elsewhere, Naruto decided not to think about that. When the attendants were done, Lala and Naruto hopped into the pool together for a while before getting out and redressing. They walked out of the bathroom and down a few halls before Lala declared, there's nothing better than taking a bath together with someone. Giving a smile to her blonde companion, isn't that right Naruto-kun? Smiling back, Naruto closed his eyes and gave her a big nod as they neared a corner, out of nowhere a fist came around the corner hitting Naruto in the stomach sending him sliding back down the hall. Nerut, Lala began saying before the person behind the fist came up behind her and grabbed her tail. The man was tall and large muscled and his head was devoid of hair. He was in a white button shirt with an open neck revealing a black undershirt and black pants. Uh, 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 princess. Not a word. The mysterious man said snidely. Get over here Natsuru, I've got her. Another man, Natsuru, who was a lot smaller than the first man, came around the corner and stood next to the first, wearing the same thing except that his shirt was fully buttoned and he had some square glasses on. Good, Felix. Now let's get out of here before our distraction is over. Um, does that mean I can go now? A third man asked. Zas, Tin? Lala squeaked out. The mentioned man shifted uncomfortably under the pleading gaze of Lala. Looking over to the man, Natsuru noted, you know, despite your cowardly personality, your ability in transformation is quite useful in infiltration. Fine, Debru, you may leave. The man holding Zastin's appearance started to say, actually it's Gi. Well, D. Felix interrupted handing Lala's tail over to Natsuru and moving closer to the shapeshifter. We could always go back on our little promise. So unless you want to be maimed, I'd recommend that you scurry on home while I still feel like letting you go back alive. A loud eep escaped the creature's mouth as his form shifted from Zastin's to a small green alien that ran down the hall away from the kidnappers. It truly is a unique coupling. Natsuru thought out loud, without his transformation ability, it would have been near impossible to get this far in while the real Zastin and much of the guard is distracted with our main force. But with that standard Balkian weakness and his cowardness, he won't be able to make much of himself. A wicked chuckle escaped Felix's mouth, yeah, it's a shame I don't have the time to deal with him. Otherwise, a groan then escaped Naruto's mouth, distracting the large man from his thought. A cruel smile grew on his lips as he walked over to the boy sprawled out on the ground. Digging the tip of his foot into Naruto's side, another groan was forced out his mouth. A swift kick sent Naruto sliding across the floor again, which produced a cry of, Naruto. From Lala as well as a renewal of her struggles to escape. That was quickly put to a stop though as Natsuru gave her tail a squeeze and a good hard tug. XXX Naruto was falling inside himself into a darkness he knew all too well. This empty void was the place he went when the villagers caught him and started beating him. Here he was safe, here he was alone. He knew nothing of what was happening to him now and when Lala's cry washed over him, he just stared on into the void, his eyes dazed and unfocused. It wasn't until a small ball of white light came into the void and brushed against Naruto's skin that a thought filled his mind. What about Lala? The little ball left his skin but the thought remained, what about Lala? She was the first one to care for him, to worry about him, to take care of him. While he may have not spent much time with her, he knew he cared for her. Naruto reached out and grabbed the ball of light, holding it tight as it grew brighter. For the first time in his life, he cared about someone and they cared for him back, and he was not about to let anything happen to that. XXX, come on Felix, we don't have the time for you to play around. Our distraction is probably wearing thin as it is. Natsuru said to his partner, forcing him to stop his assault. 
Felix gave one last look at the blonde, before turning around and conceding, fine. This caused him to miss an orange haze that had started to surround Naruto. It started as a small puff around his stomach before quickly spreading around his whole body, changing it slightly. First his fingernails lengthened and grew thicker, closely resembling claws, and then Naruto's hair grew a tiny bit longer as well as becoming wilder. The orange shroud finished its growth with a long tail coming off of Naruto's backside. He pushed one hand out scraping across the ground and lifted himself onto all fours, revealing his face which had a small change as well. The whisker marks across his face had widened, his canine teeth had grown a little longer and sharper, his eyes had changed color from their normal deep blue to a dark red and his pupils had changed into slits. A growl escaped his lips when he looked upon the kidnappers and he roared, let go of Lala. Felix didn't have a second to react as Naruto jumped from the ground and grabbed onto his back, digging his claw like nails in. Arg! Felix screamed in pain as he began thrashing about trying to get Naruto off. He reached behind him and grabbed a hold of Naruto's arms and quickly flung him off. Looking at what attacked him, Felix yelled, what the hell happened to him? Naruto simply growled again before moving in for another attack, forcing Felix to rush and pull his sword out from where he hid it while they were sneaking in and blocked the slash. However, the orange haze began to seep around the blade of the sword and burned the outside of Felix's hand. Jumping back, Felix looked at his hands and saw the insides were burned too from when he grabbed Naruto off his back. I could use some help here, Natsuru, Felix angrily shouted at his partner. Well what do you want me to do about the princess, he questioned. Just knock her out, and get your ass over here, Felix yelled again, while being pushed back by another of Naruto's slashes. Natsuru looked over the pink-haired girl squirming in his hand her face flushed red and a look of discomfort upon it. With a shrug, he applied a hard punch to the side of her head, causing her to let out a sharp cry before slumping over unconscious. Hearing the cry, Naruto's eyes locked on Natsuru. His face scrunched up in anger and he charged the man. Seeing an opening Felix swung his sword hoping to stop the beast, and he managed to catch him in the side, opening a large cut. But Naruto simple ignored the already healing slash and raked his claws across Natsuru's chest creating four deep gashes along it. Naruto didn't stop there though, he grabbed hold of Natsuru and threw him back down the hall into Felix. With the two occupied for the moment, Naruto moved closer to Lala and started sniffing her, making sure she was okay. After determining that she was, Naruto turned around and crouched protectively over her, his tail swinging back and forth waiting to make a move. After catching his breath, Felix pushed his partner off of him. Looking over at him, Felix saw that he was bleeding heavily from the wound, the burning from the orange haze having done nothing to stop the flow. If we had only been able to sneak in with a little armor. He thought, we were prepared for anything the Devalukians could throw at us but this beast, this demon. It's madness. But we've come this far already, and I'll be damned before I give in. Moving to Natsuru, Felix searched him for the gun he knew Natsuru had hidden somewhere. Finding it, he pulled out the small simple tranquilizing gun. Aiming it at Naruto, he fired three shots, each one capable of knocking out a grown man for several hours, however Naruto blocked the shots with his orangey tail the bullets disintegrating inside the swiveling mass. Not having expecting it to work, he threw the gun down and grabbed the hilt of his sword, extending the blade out. Naruto watched the man from his position in front of Lala, ready to act on any move the man might make. When he grabbed his sword, Naruto tensed up waiting. The man charged forward and Naruto waited until he got a little closer before unleashed a powerful roar. As it shot from his mouth, it sent waves of the orange haze along with it, knocking into Felix and hurling him into a wall. He remained there dazed for a bit, before his vision faded and he fell unconscious. Naruto stood alert for a minute or two more before relaxing and moving closer to Lala. He nudged her a few times seeing if she'd wake, before curling up into a ball next to her and waiting for someone to come, the orange shroud slowly diminishing around him. Naruto awoke in black darkness again, but not the same one as before. This one had a different feel, it wasn't a void of nothingness. There was something here that he could feel. For a brief second, a large stone cage flashed into Naruto's view before disappearing. After it left, a thick fog rolled in reaching no higher than Naruto's knees. Curious, Naruto explored the fog, however, he found nothing in the large space. Until he saw a small orange light in the distance. Moving closer to it, Naruto found that it was a small wisp of orange light that slowly floated around, leaving behind it a small trail of orange light that would slowly vanish. Naruto watched it float around for a while. The little wisp radiated a feeling of warmth and happiness. It floated close to Naruto and he reached out a hand to touch it, but it floated up evading his hand. Wanting to catch the wisp, Naruto tried again to catch it, and again it evaded. This time moving farther away, 
enticing Naruto to run after it. He tried for a good while to catch it, before getting lucky and was able to grab it as it tried to get past him. It felt warm in hands, more so than when it was floating around. It suddenly began to grow brighter and warmer before disappearing. Naruto looked in his hands trying to see where it went and failed to notice a forest of large trees sprout up in front of him. Looking up, he was surprised to see the forest there when there hadn't been anything there before. Curiosity once again getting the better of him, Naruto moved to one of the trees and placed his hand on it. Its feel and smell reminded him of Konoha's forest. Something in the forest was calling out, not necessarily to him, but it intrigued him nonetheless. Deciding it was better than the fog, Naruto walked into the forest, obvious that the fog and darkness disappeared as he did so. The forest felt wonderful to Naruto. There was a nice warm breeze flowing through the trees, there were birds flying around chirping, there were other animals rummaging around and there were all kinds of different flowers, some of which Naruto didn't even know what they were. And the whole forest just radiated a feeling that Naruto could best describe as the feeling of freedom. Suddenly a call sounded out through the woods. It was a happy beckoning call, that Naruto felt vibrate through his body. He wasn't sure why, but he felt that he should follow the call. And when it sounded off again, he did. At first it sounded like it was getting farther away, but as Naruto continued to run through the forest, it began to get closer and closer. The sound brought him to a tree, a giant compared to its brethren. Naruto paused to look up at the old tree, whose trunk spanned a few yards long. The call sounded again, and it sounded like it came from right around the tree, but also that had begun moving again. Naruto ran around the tree just in time to see a large bushy orange tail disappear into the surrounding trees. He was about to go follow it, when everything around him started to fade. The forest around him started to vanish with the giant old tree disappearing last, leaving Naruto in the darkness again, without any fog or orange wisp to follow. A buzzing ache filled Lala's head as she slowly regained consciousness, it was coupled with the soft fluffy feeling she felt under her head. Her mind, still foggy, took a while to remember what had happened before she left the conscious world. When she did, Lala sat up immediately, her green eyes wide open, and found that she was lying on her bed inside her room. She was about to look around when Peek flew down right in front of her and embraced her. Oh, Lala Sama, you're all right, she exclaimed, happy to see her creator awake. Lala let her hug her for a short bit while her mind muddled along. She gave Peek a light push away as she said, Yeah, I'm okay. Where's Naruto kun? Her question was ignored though as a woman in white came up to her bed from the side. Ah la la sama, you're awake, how are you feeling? She asked. I have a slight ache in my head, but otherwise I feel fine. Lala responded. She then moved to throw the covers and asked again, Where is Naruto kun? He's in the infirmary right now. He wasn't injured at all, he's just asleep and doesn't seem to want to wake up. She said making a few notes on a piece of paper she held. How long have I been asleep? Lala asked, only a few hours, the nurse replied. Lala nodded to this and started to get off her bed. When she did this, her nurse moved forward and stopped her, saying, you really shouldn't move around quite yet. You received a hard blow to the head and we need to make sure you're okay first. Lala looked at the woman and with a seriousness completely unlike her commanded, I am going to go see Naruto-kun, and you will not stop me. The nurse backed away quickly, she had never heard that tone of voice come from Lala. She had to be very serious to talk like that, to sound so much like her mother. Now when Lala went to stand up, she did so unhindered and soon afterwards left the room with Peek in tow. Through the halls she walked, making her way to the infirmary and to see one whisker-marked boy. Lala remembered being held by tail by a stranger and that Naruto was covered in some orange shroud trying to save her. After that she didn't know what happened. She assumed that Naruto saved her and she wanted to make sure he was alright. Turning a corner, Lala bumped into someone she hadn't expected to see so soon again. Papa, she said shocked. Lala, Gid said, just as surprised, what are you doing out of bed? I heard you were injured. I'm going to see Naruto-kun, she said, adopting the same seriousness and attitude she had before. Gid immediately stopped when he saw his daughter's face. It held a look that he had seen many times in the past. Lala's mother had that same look when she had decided to help someone. He knew that he would not be able to stop his daughter right now. Sighing, Gid stated, fine, but I'm coming with you. The two moved together then, making their way to the infirmary. Once there, Lala pushed through the door first and rushed through the room to the bed Naruto was lying on. Gid came in after and was forced to duck a little as Peek floated in above him. The room was just a normal infirmary and held a couple of beds and some medical supplies. Only one of the beds was filled, with Naruto, and there was a man in white watching Lala who was right next to Naruto gripping one of his hands. Gid moved into the room and walked over to the man in white, 
who greeted him with a, your highness, and a bow. Being long since used to this, Gid watched his daughter and the boy, who he had considered an undesired guest. Is there anything wrong with him? he asked. The man shook his head and said, not that I can tell, it would seem that he is just asleep in a very, very deep sleep. He stopped and a moment passed before he said, well, with the assault this morning, there are others that need my attention, if it's all right? Gid just waved a hand at him and moved behind Lala. From what he had heard when he received the emergency transmission, the castle had been attacked and snuck into, and Lala had been found next to Naruto along with two men from the attack. One simply knocked unconscious with the most notable injury being severe burns on his hands, but the other didn't turn out so well. The man was found in a pool of blood with four deep gashes in his chest and the presumed cause of death was that he bled out. This little boy, to have taken out two men with assumedly no training, there was something truly special about him. You know, Naruto-kun has no one, Lala said in a somber voice, drawing Gid from his thoughts. His parents are dead and he was all alone in a forest on his planet. He has spent most of his life alone being forced to fend for himself. And he was the one to save me. She paused here and looked up at her father, a twinkle in her eye. Papa? She asked, can we adopt Naruto? Not expecting that in the slightest, Gid choked on his next breath and started coughing. W-H, what? Cough cough where cough where this come from? Well, Lala began looking back at Naruto, he has no one and I don't want him to be alone anymore. But Lala, adoption is a big decision. I need time to think that over, and, and there are many other things that would affect that kind of decision, Gid said, not entirely believing that he was having this conversation. Lala didn't reply at all, content to simply be with Naruto for the time being. A sharp intake of air alerted Gid to another presence in the room. Looking at the door, he saw Zastan looking a little frightened in the doorway. His fluster over what Lala had just said to him was immediately overtaken by pure anger. Leaving Lala's side, Gid marched over to Zastan and took him into the hall far enough so Lala wouldn't hear. Zastan started to explain, Your Highness. I cannot begin to describe how sorry I am. With the Asa, but let out a squeak as he was cut off by Gid who punched a hole through the stone wall. Energy began crackling off of Gid's arm which served to further silence Zastan. Now Zastan, I am going to ask you one question, and if you don't have some good reason, so help me all, all, how the hell did this happen? Gid asked, all the while obviously restraining his anger at his head royal guard. Zastan dropped his head, ashamed that he could have let this happen. I'm sorry, your highness. He began, with the enemy assault on our castle. I believe that all the entrances to the castle were secure and that my abilities would be better served on the outside. I had no idea they had successfully infiltrated and were attempting to kidnap Lala. When I had learned of it, it was already over and the remaining man was already captured. He stopped, looked up at Gid, and said in an apologetic tone, I'm so sorry Gid, I will never let something like this. Just, just stop. Gid uttered, still restraining his anger. If you weren't her cousin, energy crackled one last time before simmering down and Gid removed his hand from the wall. Have a recording of the incident sent to my library computer, immediately. Turning his back on him, he said, and Zastan, do not let this happen again, otherwise her memory won't be enough to protect you. Gid didn't wait for a reply and walked away down the hall into his library. In his library, Gid let out an angry sigh. He knew something like this could happen, when fighting a war the enemy would do anything to gain an advantage. And it wasn't entirely Zastan's fault, he should have had better security set up in case something like this would happen. He wouldn't let something like this happen in the future. If it hadn't been for Naruto, while thinking of it, Gid decided to pull up the recording of what happened in the hall. It started up showing Naruto and Lala walking down the hall and then it starts. The Balkian was an interesting sight to Gid though, it meant Zastan was even less at fault. Their physical transformation were perfect, as long as they can somewhat mimic the person, it become incredibly hard to see through it. What really grabbed Gid's attention though, was the moment the orange haze surrounded Naruto. He had seen and met many powerful beings throughout his life but to have a physical manifestation of his power, that was something he hadn't seen many times. As the fight went on, Gid was more and more intrigued, he saw an ability to completely ignore a serious wound, another to use his tail as a shield and a simple roar that could actually blast someone away. And all without any training, it startled him to imagine what he might be able to do with years of training. He wanted Saito to come back so he could get a better idea of what Naruto's race's power was. It was a large surprise though, the child seemed bent on protecting Lala, and Gid had no idea why. Just for bringing him here and treating him well, it seemed ridiculous to him. However, he could use that to his advantage. Gid paused as he processed his idea. He could, as Lala requested, bring Naruto in and then train him, teaching him how to fight and use his power. Gid could turn him into a form of last defense, so that if something like what happened today were to happen again, 
Naruto would be a secret last guard to protect his daughters. It was an interesting idea, something Gid would have to think over for a while. XXX a mischievous little head poked its way into the room, finding a still unconscious Naruto and a sleeping Lala with her head lying on the bed. Nana crept into the room silently shuffling one foot after another. She made her way behind Lala and had to stifle a giggle as she stood behind her older sister. Hiding under Lala's chair, she pulled out a long feather and tickled it against Lala's hanging tail. At first she only got a snort through Lala's sleep. She continued going and soon Lala began to stir before shooting awake, sure that she could feel something on her tail. Nana stopped when Lala woke, waiting to let enough time go by before she could start again. Now that Lala was awake, Nana had a harder time getting her tail since it was swinging around slightly and she couldn't do any more prolonged brushes since it highly increased the chances of Lala finding her. Going for a short brush, Nana heard a short giggle above her. Knowing that there would be much longer of her staying hidden, Nana went for a full on assault. She grabbed hold of Lala's tail and began rubbing the feather's tip against it. Lala's reaction was immediate. She began hysterically laughing and even fell out of her chair. Looking at her chair, she saw an evilly giggling Nana holding on and tickling her tail. Nana! Stoop, let go, she said in between the forced laughter. A moment more of tickling went on before Nana decided to stop. She let go of Lala's tail and crawled out from under the chair, snickering all the while. Lala moved her tail around her, away from Nana and whined, that wasn't very nice Nana. It was just a little joke, Anya, Nana said, started to calm down. Still, she humphed. So what are you doing? Nana asked. Still keeping her distance from her playful sister, Lala answered, I'm waiting for Naruto to wake up. Doesn't that get boring? That's not important, she said, I have something I need to tell him, so I'll wait. Then I'll wait with you, Nana replied enthusiastically, moving closer to the bed and sleeping boy. Several minutes passed though, and Nana stared to get bored. Looking over his peaceful face, she remembered something and a wide smile grew on her face. Hey Anu, she said, what to see a trick. Then without waiting for an answer, she reached onto the bed and started scratching Naruto's cheek and chin. Lala wondered what Nana was doing and voiced her confusion. What are you? But stopped when a soft sound started coming from Naruto. She moved closer and heard that it was a quiet purring coming from the sleeping boy. Her face filled with wonder as Nana answered happily, he purrs. Lala moved around to the other side of the bed and touched his other cheek, wanting to try it for herself. She started scratching it and the purring doubled in fold. They both stayed like this for a while marveling at his unique quality until he grumbled out, EHH, not again, Nana-chan. Naruto hadn't been expecting to wake up like this, having two hands rubbing his face and a rumbling in his chest that resulted in the purr. Although he couldn't say he didn't like it. Naruto didn't have a chance to open his eyes before a set of arms wrapped around him and a cry of, Naruto you're wake, hit his ears. Opening his eyes, Naruto was first surprised by the dropping of Kun after his name, but that quickly disappeared seeing that it was Lala holding him. He cried back, Lala-chan, you're okay. Of course I am, you saved me, remember? Lala replied. A confused look came upon Naruto's face, as well as Nana's, and he shook his head. The last thing he remembered was getting punched in his stomach from around the corner. When those guys grabbed me, you started fighting them and you saved me. Oh wow, you really did that Naruto-kun? Nana interrupted. The confused look remained on his face and Naruto once again shook his head. You don't remember, Naruto? Lala asked one last time and received another shake. She frowned a bit and wondered why he didn't remember, while Nana said, Well come on, let's go have some fun, pulling Naruto out of the bed and leaving the room, leaving Lala slowly following behind. Two days later Naruto, Nana and Momo were all together inside the field. Naruto and Nana were running around playing together while Momo was reading under the tree. Occasionally Momo would look up at the pair with an odd look on her face. They continued like this for a while until the door opened and in walked first Gid and then Lala, who held the largest grin Naruto had ever seen on her face. Papa? Nana called running closer to him with Naruto following close behind. Gid smiled first at Nana and then he set his eyes on Naruto. Naruto couldn't tell what Gid was thinking, but he held a face that seemed to be a mix of interest and like he had something planned. Momo, would you come here for a moment? He asked, looking away from Naruto. Closing her book, using her finger as a place marker, she stood up and walked over to the group and stood next to Lala. What is it? She asked, her head cocked to the side. Ignoring her question for the time being, Gid coughed once before beginning. Uzumaki Naruto. The person in question was a little nervous. He was standing in front of the four and he felt like he was on display, and Gid's tone wasn't helping. Continuing Gid said, It was brought to my attention that you protected Lala from some invaders, and for that you have my thanks. 
He stopped for a moment here before starting again. And, it was also told to me that you have nowhere to stay and no family as is. Nana started to make a sound but was quickly shushed by Lala. So, I would like to offer you an invitation to become a part of our family. Time seemed to freeze as Naruto heard this and the implications began to sink in. No more searching and scavenging for food. No more having to always be alert, always watching his back. No more being alone. He could be a part of a real family. A tear came from his eye and rolled down his face, as he slowly nodded once. Then again, and again. Slowly growing faster until he was nodding fast enough that the tears of joy were shaking off his head. Lala was the first to charge forward and embrace Naruto in the largest hug he had ever had. And Nana was close behind her, joining in the hugging of Naruto. Momo, however, wasn't sure how she felt and stayed behind with Gid as he watched the three thanks for watching, also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.